Hello and welcome to the podcast from the Huffines Institute for Sports Medicine and Human Performance. I'm your host, Dr. Tim Lightfoot, and I'm so glad that you're all taking time to download us, listen to us, or watch us. Uh, like everyone else in the country, we're hoping that all of you are staying healthy, staying well. We know that you're all washing your hands, coughing into your elbows, and doing the social distancing thing that you're supposed to. And we're no different there here at the Health Heinz Institute. As a matter of fact, we're going to do all of our video podcasts now through uh, our wonderful Zoom connections. And so that's why the quality may not quite be what you're expecting, but uh, it is what we're going to do during this time period so we can meet all the safety precautions that we're all supposed to have. In the meantime, we hope that you're all still being active. You certainly can be active and exercise during this time period. Uh, as a matter of fact, right down here in the bottom of your screen, there is a link to the guidance from the American College of Sports Medicine about exercising during this pandemic. You certainly can do it. I would encourage you to download that. Pull up that link, download that uh, pamphlet they have there and follow that. Uh, podcast here in the near future that we're gonna do, we're going to focus on that. So keep coming back to the Huffines Institute to find out what new things that we've got coming. Today, I'm going to bring back a uh, colleague of mine, uh, been on the podcast a couple of times in the past, and he's one of ours at Texas A&M. Uh, he is Dr. John Thornton, who is an executive professor and the director of the Texas A&M Coaching Academy. Welcome back to the podcast, John. Thank you, Dr. Lightfoot. Uh, enjoyed uh, my past experiences. Looking forward to this one. Well, we're, we're, we've got, I've asked John to come on today uh, because of his extensive background uh, in athletics administration. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dr. Thornton and we'll introduce our topic uh, today, which certainly relates to the things that we're all going through right now. Uh, I won't do a full uh, background. If you want to hear that, you can go back and listen to a couple of the other podcasts we've talk, talk, done with Dr. Thornton. But he is a longtime athlete, coach, and administrator here at Texas A&M. That's where the majority of his career has been, uh, including being athletic director here at Texas A&M as we transitioned into the SEC in 2011, 2012. Uh, he's a member of the Texas A&M Hall of Honor, and he was named as an SEC basketball legend a few years back, uh, very appropriately, I might add. And so I asked John to come on today so we could talk about what happens when the sports stop. Uh, is, this seems to be an unusual time in our history. And I want to chat with John today about what's going on, probably what's going on behind the scenes because he's had expertise and experience in setting up these kind of scenarios uh, to, to be dealt with. And, and so John, I'm just gonna start right there. Do you remember any time in the history of sports where we've had such a, a shutdown of all the sporting events. You know, interesting, Tim, in that, uh, you know, going back and just recollecting um, things that have occurred. And uh, I mean, it's all across the board, but uh, obviously weather related from um, thunderstorm to lightning threat to hurricanes where uh, football games have been called off. Um, to a gas leak at, in uh, a gym where um, life-threatening injury occurred from inhaling gas, where a basketball game had to be uh, called off, um, all the way to 9-11 to things such as H1N1 when, uh, when working in the athletic department, uh, a lot of tabletop exercises were conducted uh, um, in, in uh, preparation for the, that uh, potential. But again, as any organization, whether it be athletics or corporate or any walk of life, uh, going through the exercise of uh, planning, uh, contemplation, uh, being able to have a protocol established, that, that occurs in, 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 in so many different levels, and it did in athletics. And as much as you can try to prepare for it, I mean, you can to a certain extent, but then obviously you can't because... Uh, of the magnitude and the timing of things at times. Was there ever a time that you planned or you, the department talked about what would happen if there were no sports allowed whatsoever for an extended period of time? I think the closest we, you know, the other ones, the, 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 the coincidence to um, and uh, just a specific event, uh, whether it be weather or, you know, some kind of an extreme emergency, that's one thing. But as far as uh, sports going away for an extended period of time, the H1N1, um, um, scenario that was uh, through risk management, through health and safety, through the um, whatever happens in the university as well as the local community, you, that was a, 
a scenario that was talked about, addressed, and plans were put in place for sports to stop. I'm not sure that anybody really understood the magnitude of that because we'd never gone. Now that's what's happening now because we actually are doing this. I think that that will never slip up on anybody anymore because it, it, it can actually happen. So yeah, this is a new threshold that's going to make preparation. You know, once we get by this, that, that, that preparation is going to be um, extremely more important and uh, taking so much more um, the approach about, you know, trying to foresee what actions are going to be taken and also timing of those actions. Well, it's, it's nice to hear that, that, that planning had taken care of, had been taken care of with H1N1. Obviously, that was not put into play at that point. Do you think those plans were dusted off uh, in the lead up to the decision to cancel sports? Do you think people relied, relied back on what had been done in the past? I, I would think so. And again, I don't know if anybody really thought that it was going to actually happen, but it was going to be out of our hands one way or the other. We had to have plans, but it was going to be uh, agencies uh, entering into it, not necessarily the NCAA, mm -hmm. but uh, whether it be the health department, whether it be state and local, but that was actually a protocol that was looked at because it was going to be, you know, uh, it was going to be something that had to happen. So, yeah, I would think once they did that, 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 that you'd be able to go, uh, you know, resurrect that and look at it. But I would say this, much like what goes on in athletics and preparation of an event, there's so many tabletop things security-wise, crowd control, uh, uh, different scenarios that occur that they it, – it's, it's – you know, done before every game and game managers, uh, athletic administrator types, university individuals from law enforcement, UPD to uh, student affairs, they all get in a room and, and go over this stuff on a, if not a weekly basis, at least a monthly basis. So yeah, I do believe that protocols are there for them to uh, uh, use as a resource. So H1N1 was a uh, planning exercise that may have been uh, used for some of what's going on now, but as I was thinking about it, the last time I can remember sports being postponed like this was around 9-11. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and it, to me, I have kind of a, a similar feel um, in that there, there was so much unknown. It was unnerving, as this is, because of the information that's out there. I'm not, you know, I don't think there's panic is a word at all, but it's just, it's just different. And you didn't know how 9-11 was going to uh, manifest itself on the the social consciousness of of the world as, as you know just in the United States in particular, so that was un, it was unchart, uncharted. We're kind of in the same place right now because what do you learn from this? Uh, how do you uh, go forward knowing that this is not a one time occurrence um, in, in our in our society today and the the extensive uh, travel that people do and uh, we're all connected so. Right. Um, this is one of those kind of things that uh, is going to open people's eyes and, and, and start a whole nother deliberation about um, how things are going to be handled going forward. And, you know, you think about, we're talking about, you know, a, a two, three week, three, a month, whatever the, the distance is that they have out there for us to have a feel for this. Okay, well, you know, we got through basketball, you know, being uh, doing the radio for Texas A&M and traveling all over the SEC and basically the United States and games. So now you're going to think about, well, you know, t sports teams travel um, and, you know, got to get a handle on the, 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 the preventative measures you take to not to be able to um, you know, put people at risk in, in, in stands or well as on the court. Okay, now what happens with football coming up in the fall? I mean, there's right. so many things that right now that people are having to discuss and try to figure out the best way to handle that. Yeah, and that would be a real mess, I think, if we had to cancel college football from a variety of standpoints, but in particular because it's such a huge moneymaker for most athletic departments. Yeah, it's the lifeblood or the, or the, the stream of revenue in uh, like institutions like us. And... Uh, um, you know, season ticket sales, television packages that are associated with conferences, you know, those things are huge. And, and uh, with the expense of running an athletics department, you've got to have that, that resource that, uh, that provides for other sports. And that's right. what happened with, with the case of football. Right. And with 9-11, there were, uh, I think, some games that were postponed uh, towards the end of the season. I think it was about a one or two week time period. Most sports shut down after 9-11 as well. I think they learned uh, from what happened in the sporting world after JFK was assassinated. 
but many people don't remember that. You and I are fortunate to be old enough to remember that. I know uh, the NFL yeah, did not. Bar barely for you, because you, I was in the fifth <laughs> grade. So you, you were just barely. I was, I, was, I was trying to provide solidarity there with you, Dr. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. But uh, it was uh, during that time period, uh, people tend to forget that the NFL did not postpone their games uh, just two or three days afterwards. And uh, I know the commissioner at the time, uh, I've read a couple of different things, who said that was his greatest regret ever, was not postponing those football games. Right. And, and, and I'm, I found myself with that same uh, thought process. You know, we were in Nashville getting ready to play the SEC basketball tournament, and they'd already had – we're two games in, and we were going to play the next day, and then uh, preparations were ongoing until uh, around noon, and then it was called off. And as you and I both are, we watch sports. Uh, you know, you take soccer away from you. And, uh, and the other sports that you enjoy, I mean, I, I enjoy the things. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's kind of a release. It's a distraction. And, you know, if you're playing it, it's one thing. But if you're also a fan and it's a part of your life as far as the enjoyment part, well, there's a huge void there. Right. And uh, obviously you don't want to play games with, where it jeopardizes fans or players or communities. But at the same time, it's a great resource, when, if, if done safely and properly in the right timing, for people to be able to enjoy and, uh, and kind of be a distraction. And, and I think that was one of the reasons that um, people were excited to see sports come back after 9-11. And I know that had been one of the reasons that uh, Commissioner Rosell had said the NFL games went on was to give – the American population a distraction uh, to help them come back to more normal life. Uh, and uh, certainly, I think when we start seeing sports again, that's when we will all kind of get a sense that normality is coming back. No, I agree with you. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be refreshing to be able to turn on a golf tournament or uh, pick up Major League Baseball or uh, see your, your various campuses start spring sports again. And um, Hopefully that's something that's not um, too distant. Uh, but again, it's, we're dealing with some unknowns right now, and that timing is uh, hard to put a, a finger on as far as when it's going to have a, a chance to be back. Yeah. It's, it, it talking about an interesting turn of timing. Um, I, I just, doing a little bit of research, I looked back to see what happened to sports during the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918, because that's probably the closest thing we have to a contagion-type driven problem that we're, like we've got now. And uh, at that time, the predominant professional sport was baseball. And there was a lot of discussion uh, about whether or not they should have the baseball season uh, in 1918. They were actually also, also coming off the end of World War I as well. And um, they did have the baseball season, and several players and some umpires and a few other folks passed away uh, during that season. But it's interesting if any of our readers are, are interested in that uh, there's a new book coming out, actually this coming Tuesday. We're going to talk about timing. Right. A new book coming out by Randy Roberts, who is a sports historian at Purdue, that's looking specifically at what went on during that season and the, the debates and discussion behind the, see the scenes as to whether or not they should have sports. So I think that's an, in it's an interesting contrast to what's going on now. Uh, in 1918, they decided to go ahead and play baseball. And uh, whether or not that helped or hindered um, the uh, death rate from Spanish flu, I'm not sure we know. We'll have to tune in till the book comes out on Tuesday to find out for sure, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we all know that it swept across the country. I think it basically, I'm, I'm sure it started in pockets, but it either Midwest or on the East Coast and just went across the United States. And of course, it's a different day and time with, with the extensive travel that people do. It's, you know, it's pockets all over the place. But again, Going back to what the NBA did when they had a couple of players test mm -hmm. positive and they, they um, you know, canceled the season, um, once that shoe dropped, I think that pretty much set the stage for all other sports. They're, 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 you know, and obviously now you look back and it, it was the right thing to do until um, we get a better understanding about, um, you know, the treatment. Right. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you to put on your prediction hat here, your Kreskin hat. Okay. The, we will get through this. The end will come. Who knows when it will be, shorter or longer, um, depending on who you, you talk to. What, how is this going to affect the planning of sports in the future? Will we learn from this? Do you think we'll put these kind of worst case scenarios in place for planning for athletic events? Yeah, a couple of things that jump 
to my mind is one, um, I think individuals, at least in the short term, are going to think the thought process of do I want to go to a large event? I'm not mm. trying to be, you know, a doomsayer, but I think people are going to, now I think millennials and younger people are going to go, what the heck? They're going to spring break right now, which we're not, nobody would think that would be very wise to do that. I mean, right, right. obviously, don't do it. But I would think people, it's going to be kind of a wake up call for actually thinking um, of, when I go to a grocery store or a place where there's a large gathering of people, I'm going to social distance. And I think that's kind of a thought process that's going to come out of this. Right. And w will it wear off? Yes. Um, and, but again, I think there's a consciousness that's going to be uh, put in people right now that's not going to go away for a while. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be a refreshing uh, opportunity to have a decision to go to sporting events and watch and, and be a part of it. But I think they're in the back of people's minds now, they're going to go, okay, what are the, the ramifications? One thing you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of sanitation, uh, sanit you know, the, 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 those stations all around stadiums. Now we have them on a the campus. We know that, right? Uh, right, right? But it's going to be one of those things. And, and uh, the cleanliness, uh, the, 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 the hygiene of keeping your hands clean and, and, and keeping your distance, I think that's something that's just going to be a part of sport now. I mean, uh, and not that it hadn't been, but it's going to be really a focus. Yeah. I, I recently, uh, as you know, we flew back in from some travel and going through the airports that we went through, it's amazing. I've never seen men in the bathroom wash their hands as thoroughly as I, I did this time. So maybe at least that message is getting through. Yeah, I, I can say that I've, I've, I've practiced pretty good uh, hygiene throughout my life, but I am really focused these days and uh, the cleanest my hands have been in a long time. But, you know, that's, that's kind of the consciousness we're talking about. Yeah. So uh, I think we're winding down on our time here, John, um, as we do with all of our podcasts. Uh, do you have any last thoughts? Uh, if someone watched this podcast, what's the one thing that you want them to take away from it? Well, one thing I think uh, uh, to be logical and to make sure that you don't, you know, that you do things that uh, don't be frustrated because of uh, your inability uh, to go and actually have an impact on creating a, a successful end to this uh, dilemma. Uh, take stock and take care of yourself and, and, and keep yourself from exposure and exposing others. And that's something that I think that, uh, you know, I, I th this week I have a different idea about that than I had two weeks ago. And so that consciousness is something that we need to hold on to and learn from this. And uh, you're doing your part if you take care of yourself and don't expose yourself or others. Um, and uh, this thing will all pass. Well, thanks for those uh, wise words. Those are great last words here for the podcast. So John, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Hey, thank you, Tim. Stay safe. Uh and uh, as I said at the beginning of the show, we want to thank everyone for taking the time to download us, uh, listen to us. Um, we are working on a special, what we call special set of podcasts that relate to this and exercise. Again, as I said earlier, just look down at the bottom of the screen. There's a website there that you can go to and you can click to get information about how to exercise during the pandemic, and how to be safe while you do that. Uh, we would encourage you all to do that. At the end of all of our episodes, we say uh, we want you to be active and healthy. But this, we're going to amend it and say, uh, wash your hands, cough into your elbow, practice social distancing, and be active so you can be healthy because we want you all to tune in next time that we have a podcast. And until then, we hope you all are healthy.